Greetings. Today's topic is something called spray and pray, which is an investment method that Daimler and Mercedes-Benz have come up with. Uh, so Daimler, Daimler Mercedes-Benz VW slash BMW have come up with when it comes to dealing with the threat of Tesla uh, as a competitor. So we take a look at this theory. We also have uh, some material regarding Stanford, which is my hat and shirt, as you can see. And then we also um, do our trade blast at the end because our Patreon access has been shut down temporarily. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. I wanted to thank our Patreon supporters as well as our subscribers. If you enjoy the show, please take time to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss anything. So I uh, wanted to... I. We have these different beats for the show where there are different sort of topics we cover. One of them is sort of what's going on at Stanford and things you might want to be aware of. So if you're interested in a million dollars worth of information from Stanford for free, I wanted to invite you to take a look at uh, the Stanford website. Um, and, it, and the way you get there is if you type in uh, Stanford and proactive skincare into your, your Google bar, you will be exposed to kind of the latest and what's going on uh, at and around Stanford and technology. And my dare to you is if you watch 10 of those 45 minute shows, um, you'll get a million dollars worth of information that's common knowledge in the Valley, but not knowledgeable in your area. So again, that's Stanford, proactive skin care, separate words, you have to put them all in, watch that initial show, and then look at all the other shows that are there. Stanford has something called the E-Corner, and so we have a pretty large entrepreneurship effort on campus, and this is kind of a key component of that, and I think that you'll find it very useful, and I hope you'll take time to drop me a note if you uh, develop a command of business along the Stanford lines that uh, you find educational, useful, profitable, and I think you'll be impressed. So uh, the second phase of the show right now is to dive into, I was, uh, we kind of have beats for the show where there are subjects we cover like Bob Lutz or Mercedes or, and how they relate to Tesla in a process. And today I wanted to sort of take a, a closer look at what's going on with Daimler. There's an analyst in Germany that came up with a term that I thought was a chuckle where he said that the process that's been developed uh, is something called spray and pray. So basically, as you know, Daimler and all the other majors around the world have had very little success when it comes to sort of attacking Tesla successfully. And so despite the fact that they're spraying a lot of money around, they're not showing very much success for that. And so we wanted to sort of dive into that a little bit. So as you know, Daimler and Tesla were partners previously. They broke up and uh, Daimler ever since has been trying to catch up to Tesla, even though they had a lot of opportunity to be exposed internally as board members to what Tesla was up to. And it just shows you that even if you're on the board and you're seeing what they're doing, it's still hard for competitors uh, that were even former close partners to compete with Tesla. So. Uh, very interesting. Um, so what I had a chance to visit GM's headquarters uh, recently. And as I stared at the building, I was fascinated to sort of review how and why it is that the domestics are so far behind, even just like the Germans are in terms of closing the gap. As you know, GM just signed a deal to uh, work with LG to build a uh, a battery production plant in Ohio and sort of move towards electric in that fashion. We were kind of intrigued by this because um, GM had $2 billion after they sold the European operations and they could have actually built the plant, I guess it would be four years ago or started to build it so it'd be operational right now instead of starting it three months ago and now it's shut down during the COVID crisis. So um, the issue about Germany kind of looks a little bit like the issue about what's going on with GM. Um, the conventional wisdom in the auto industry sort of over the last 60 years 
has been to separate um, GM, for example, is 25% vertically integrated, Tesla's above 70%, and that's because they co-own the battery plant. And so the conventional wisdom of the auto industry has been to keep your uh, integration down because if you're at 25%, the number of uh, fields that you have to stay up on is lower. And so therefore you can outsource, buy what you need and get things done. So this is actually a brilliant idea on one hand because it reduces your R&D costs, you spread the risk over more people, et cetera. So it's a great idea. The flip side of this is that, um, as it was explained by Elon Musk, you can actually make a phone call right now from wherever you are in the world. And um, within a couple of days, you can actually source enough parts to create your own car slash car company in 48 hours because of how the outsourcing process works, which makes it harder for product differentiation for all these firms, hence the number of challenges they're having with everybody, including their challenges with Tesla. So I thought this was like, wow, this is uh, very interesting. So the argument again is that te uh, Daimler slash even GM and all the other German makes are really praying and spraying, spraying large amounts of cash, if not billions, unsuccessfully. One example I found unbelievably interesting is there's a place in Germany called Kemmertz and uh, Daimler, Daimler Benz actually built a battery production facility, a small one there, and I think they're building a new one now. And they ran into a problem because in round one, they couldn't get VW and BMW to join them in the plant. So they had a problem getting economies of scale that would make batteries coming from that facility actually work economically. So it's understanding that they shut it down and then went back to buying from LG and others in Korea as a solution. So it's not like they have not been doing research and trying, but they've been running through some obstacles that were unexpected. So now um, cattle, for example, or LG are co-building these factories with the sort of big OEMs in Europe as a way to give them sort of the battery side uh, expertise that they're now getting from uh, the Korean competitors that they didn't really have in, in house. And it wasn't just simply a matter of throw up a building, buy some equipment and you're rolling. A uh, little bit more complex than that. Even Tesla, you know, recognizes slash recognize that circumstance. So I thought this was kind of fascinating. The other thing that I wanted to bring up in the review of the spray and pray process is there's a senior executive at uh, VW, Audi, Porsche, in fact, at Porsche, and he explained that when you look at uh, the, um, the, the Porsche's sort of major cars, you're talking 13 million lines of code. So kind of what they're highlighting is the fact that there's no loss of effort in getting a command of coding by the big companies. And in reality, uh, they spent a lot of money and they do have a lot of software going on. Um, you know, the, the thing though, I'd have to say is there's something called having software and there's also a concept in business or, or software called the bleeding edge. So one of the advantages Tesla has is that Elon is actually one of the best coders in the world, i.e. writing software. And so not only does he know how to code, but along with um, a bunch of the Valley and Stanford alums, they're actually redefining how coding is done. And so I just think this is kind of fascinating. Um, one example that I'm playing with right now is I just, I have a, uh, a laptop that's almost three years old and it's a very nice machine. Um, it's a, an HP and it's a solid state, which is good but the thing runs hot a lot and the, the fan comes on a lot. So I was intrigued because I just bought a MacBook Pro because we're gonna change up and do better editing on our show, et cetera. And I'm getting all the gear together to get rolling on our show, changing in that way. But I have to say, I'm blown away by the fact that I don't hear a fan running all the time and the size of the MacBook Pro is so small, it's mind blowing. And as I thought through kind of what was going on with this, what I realized was that um, the, the, the biggest uh, sort of power drain and heat generator 
is the chip, the processing chip. And what's happening now is uh, at the major plants in Taiwan, you have these chips that are getting smaller and smaller. See, they draw less power. So you have this brutal combination that uh, is being battled by the global automakers of the fact that there's kind of a combination of a software issue when it comes to battery management and, um, and you know, things like autonomous that they're behind on, but they're also at a little bit of a competitive disadvantage because you'll notice that um, the Intel and AMD or big facilities in Silicon Valley are three miles in front of, of what's happening at Tesla. So as you have Tesla's vehicles being upgraded to these latest technologies, um, they're drawing less power, their uh, computing capabilities have increased, et cetera. And so staying sort of at the bleeding, leading edge of this stuff is one of the reasons why we believe that uh, there's a huge challenge that's going on when it comes to closing the gap by OEMs of all types when it comes to uh, dealing with Tesla. Um, I'm looking forward to actually speaking of that battery day is coming up supposedly. And there are a lot of people that are excited about potential. Um, I actually think it's a joke and it's only a joke because we know he's going to talk about some things, but he's also very cagey in terms, Elon Musk is very cagey in terms of what he will or won't present. So it makes it very difficult for anybody to, you know, sort of get a feel for things are going to change, but they big time really don't reveal a lot of information at those, which I think is kind of a chuckle. And because everybody is sitting there going, oh, wow, battery day is going to make a big difference. And then you show up and everybody's been waiting all this time and find out that um, they didn't know that much more now than you knew before. And uh, they're having to be cagey because uh, they're competing with some very big players who um, have the potential for uh, disrupting their supply chain of whatever it is that they're trying to do as part of the process, potentially slowing them down. So we'll see what happens with that one. So in general, what we wanted to point out is that, yes, we've seen huge amounts of money being spent by most of the OEMs in Germany, and uh, we have not seen a significant move forward, and uh, we look forward to sort of reporting on what, what's next on it. Um, the final segment of the show today that I wanted to cover is sort of our trade blast. We ran into a problem with our Patreon page. So for a couple of three days, we were told by them that it'll take them that long to restart our Patreon activities. And so we're sort of slogging through that and therefore have to bring our trade blast, et cetera. Either, you know, if you want to send us, uh, if you're an upper level Patreon person, send us a note at admin at Tesla Fan Insights so we can keep your uh, updated on what's going on directly as we usually do on the page. Also wanted to uh, note that right now is trade blast time. So today is Friday. It's usually limited to just our top level Patreon supporters. And our assessment of today is that uh, congratulations to those of you who own Tesla. The stock is up like 40 points um, because the market's strong. And I actually think it's because of the Goldman three-day rule after Goldman announced three days ago um, that they were sort of upgrading uh, the stock. We're now in a situation where people are responding to that in terms of modifying their purchases uh, to address the input that was made. I do think it's a challenging day because this is actually a pin day where 750 looks like a likely target, uh, where there are a lot of options out there for the uh, market makers to try to pin the stock. Um, and for them, hopefully it doesn't get to 800 because that would be very expensive for those folks. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I'm also heavily in terms of positions, you know, I have uh, over a hundred calls on uh, Abbott Labs and from what I can see, you know, they just got an upgrade to 109 by Citibank and, you know, a couple more upgrades combined with the good earnings that they're presenting and the success they're having with the test for the virus for me means it's going to be, you know, a really great situation. Um, I, I try to cover things a little bit differently with this show. I wanted to note to you guys, um, if you're going to miss earnings slash guidance, you actually have to announce that two weeks before earnings are announced. So we already passed that period. So Tesla is at least going to meet earnings, if not exceed it somewhat nicely. So you guys can ask as many times as you'd like about the Q1 number. And I just want to say that the number will be profitable. 
and it will continue to set Tesla up for joining the S&P. Um, I, uh, so that's my general take on sort of where that's going. So from a trade blast standpoint, I think it's an awesome day. Um, and I just wanted to, uh, uh, you know, note kind of what was going on. Just requested that I post the Stanford link. Not only will I post it, I think I'm going to go ahead and include it on a regular basis. Whenever you guys go, you can hit the Stanford link and be able to access free information and access to what's going on at the university in terms of information flow that might be useful. So, um, you know, you know, different angle for our show today, going on the German beat to see what's going on with all other car makers and Tesla. Um, congratulations to those of you who own options or stock right now, because it's booming. I think that, you know, there's uh, a nice buzz heading into uh, the earnings period and we're excited because we own some and it's nice to do so right now. At any rate, um, I wanted to, uh, Remind you about our health tips that we usually do. Please make sure you do 25 leg lifts per leg. Also wanted to encourage you to uh, every day, you know, maintain leg strength and no knee issues as you age. Two, try a five to one of the other diets relative to mental health uh, from the fasting standpoint. Three, wanted to encourage you S uh, 30 SPF or greater if you're gonna be out in the sunshine. Uh, four, uh, consider playing a musical instrument or um, uh, or dancing or some other activity that generates mental activity that's sort of not the norm. Uh, also wanted to uh, note Mr. Petrobono, who's one of our supporters, mentioned that uh, you know weightlifting uh, is another way to maintain bone density as you age. So another thought that one might consider. So um, you know, as usual, we want you to know that we appreciate your being here. Your time's valuable. We look forward to your comments post show so that we can blend that in. And, uh, you know, uh, we want to um, encourage you to uh, hook up some Abbott ads for now because great company, perhaps the best CEO in the world right now. And I think you'll enjoy the outcome of the hard work they're doing where they have now four new uh, tests uh, that are ready to go and rolling. So uh, just wanted to uh, encourage you in that frame at any rate, um, I, I just want to make one last note. I, uh, I did a blast a few weeks ago, and uh, it was an afternoon blast because Italy shut down, and I, it turns out there are a bunch of people who saved money or made money because they got out uh, in, in time. So some of you might not like our show, but there are actually some people that have made and saved a lot of money in the process. So we're happy to hear that and really consider you to be part of the family. Uh, because as you're successful, we definitely get to enjoy the fact that is the case. So at any rate, uh, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. In Germany, you say tschüss. Au revoir, French. Le Hebrew, Hebrew, Choda, Hepez, Farsi. Straz, Vice, Russian, hello. Actually, I don't know anything in Norwegian, but it'll be interesting. Hey, um, do for Swedish. Uh, um, and Ni uh, hao ma, Chinese. Uh, we look forward to some China plant updates because it looks like some great stuff going on there. Have a wonderful day. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, in Jamaica. We say, no respect, walk good, man. Thank you and have a good day. Bye for now.